So here we are with the second half of Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 5, also known as the batch of episodes that destroyed me emotionally and damaged my soul forevermore. Let's talk about this barrage of fun, shall we? Put the bunny back in the box. Welcome back to episode by episode, a series of videos where I look back at every single episode of a certain TV show. Uh, this TV show we're doing now is Buffy the Vampire Slayer and we are on the second half of season 5 and as I mentioned before it's quite the emotional set of episodes. Yeah, this uh, even on a rewatch some of these episodes really get to me. Um, but let's start off with a relatively fun one with Checkpoint. So Checkpoint brings us the Watcher's Council back into the fold. Um, they are there to evaluate Buffy, Giles and pretty much everybody involved in the Scooby Gang activities. And it'd be fair to say it doesn't go down overly well. Uh, but what I like about this though is that the Watcher's Council are so by the book and by the numbers and just so annoying for the most part that it's great fun to see everybody turn against them. Um, but even before that happens there's a lot of fun to be had in Checkpoint with all of the interviews that everybody has. I think every single character that gets interviewed has a moment where they're just awesome in it. It's so much fun to see how nervous some of them are, particularly Anya with her ex-demon thing. Um, Spike obviously has the kind of reception to them that you'd expect him to have. But yeah, all of these little moments are fun. They're all great character moments that shows how far everybody's come. And imagine if they were having this sort of conversation with them back in, say, season one or season two. Like, I think it would be a very different sort of conversation. It's just nice to see how far these characters have developed and where they are now compared to where they were. They'll stand up to the Watchers Council now, which is great to see. Particularly at the end. I love Buffy turning the tables on everyone. It's such a cool moment. It's one of my favourite Buffy moments ever, actually, for her, the character. Just seeing her stand up to these people who have been giving her a lot of problems for a while now, despite supposed to be the people that are there to help her. And now she's like, you are going to help me. I'm in charge. Glory's a big threat. You can't fight her without me. And she's right. She's 100% right. It's awesome seeing how proud Giles is of her and everybody watching from up on the beams of the magic shop as well, seeing Buffy give this commanding speech and show that she's in charge. Feels like the, mo the moment that Buffy's been building up to, as, as her herself has been building up to for the past four and a half seasons to this point. So cool to see. One of my favourite Sarah Michelle Geller moments and just so good to see the Watchers Council basically been given the middle finger to because they deserve every middle finger. All of them, apart from Giles and maybe Wesley. Actually, no, to be fair, well, Wesley's good. He's not the Watchers Council anymore. So yeah, apart from Giles, have that Watchers Council. Yeah, I really like Checkpoint. Really good episode of the show. And I forgot to mention too, actually, as much as I hate the Watchers Council, they come good in this one. I love the information that we get on Glory because she'd already been such a threat up to this point. And then to find out that um, she's a god is just, wow, okay, now what? Now what do we do? So yeah, they do come good with that a bit of information. And I enjoy the lore for Glory as well. I'd say she's one of my favourite big bads just because there's a lot to her. There's a lot of mythology just behind that one character. And Ben as well, so technically two. So uh, yeah, I suppose they did some good in this. Blood ties. So when I said I don't hate the character of Dawn, I think a large part of that is down to how good Michelle Trachtenberg is at playing her when she's given the right material. She's given the right material in Blood Ties. This is a big one for her, like a really big one. She finds out who she is. She finds out that she's the key. She sees Ben turn into glory and then instantly forgets it, which is great fun. And she handles that kind of how you would expect somebody to handle it. Is it not very well? Um, she, she acts out. She rebels. She kicks up a fuss and too right. I don't blame her in the slightest. And yeah, Trachtenberg is awesome in this episode. Uh, everybody is, to be fair. Sam Michelle Geller does really well, but this is Dawn's episode more than anybody else, and deservedly so, because she needed an episode like this, and it's good to see that she did find out the secret about her. It wasn't like a season finale thing where they saved it for that. We got it around the midway point. And yeah, the timing of it, I think, worked well, particularly for Dawn's character. And this is a good one for Glory, too. Um, I love seeing it when she actually goes up against the Scooby Gang, goes up against Buffy, because she's almost a god without fear, really. Like, she doesn't fear these people at all. They're just inconsequential to her. So it's really awesome to see Willow and Tara combine to do this spell that basically sends her high up into the sky and plummets her back down to the ground again. Fantastic moment for those two. Willow and Tara, I love when these two show how powerful they are. And to do this to, to not just a villain, but to an actual god shows that, yeah, these are pretty two powerful wickers. So a good episode for quite a lot of people, actually, Blood Ties. And a good one for Ben as well. Um, of the two, obviously Ben's a far weaker character than Glory is, but he does have some moments where he shines, and this is one of them. I love that he's kind of standing up to Glory in a way. He knows that she can't hurt him. 
which is kind of makes for a nice dynamic. Obviously, he goes through certain changes towards the end of the season. But yeah, at this point, I think Ben's a really, really strong character. And to be fair, even when he does kind of slide over to full-on villainy, he's still quite interesting then too. Crush. Um, so Crush is an episode I remember being really, really excited for because Drusilla's back which is great. Drusilla's back in Buffy. We had just seen her on Angel, um, a show we'll get to at some point. But yeah, it was nice seeing her back on Buffy and particularly back with Spike. So I can Drusilla were the highlight, well, one of the highlights of season two, which was a really good season. And I was so excited to see them back together again. But sadly, the episode doesn't really do that much for me. And I think that's because at this point in Spike's arc of his infatuation with Buffy, like I didn't really buy into it. Like I didn't hate it. I just I didn't relate to it at all. I couldn't like believe that Spike, who was hating Buffy so much, would kind of make the fairly quick switch to just having this obsession with her. Like, not an evil obsession, like genuinely wanting her to love him. Uh, it didn't sit right for me, and it particularly didn't sit right that he would choose her over Drusilla. So I think that's maybe why Crush isn't one of my favourite episodes. That being said, I did like Buffy's reaction to the whole thing. Her absolute disgust that Spike would feel this way was pretty perfect. Pretty much how she would be. And seeing Spike's reaction at the end when Buffy basically tells him to do one is quite a powerful moment. James Masters is a good actor. Even though I don't fully believe in what's going on, I believe it in the moment because of James Masters, because of how he does things. And throwing Harmony into the mix as well, I'm not really a fan of that. I think Spike and Drusilla were enough. Like, I'd like a lot more attention on those two. Harmony felt a bit unnecessary on this point because she was never really an integral character for Spike. She was time killer, really. She was just filler for him until he found who he wanted to do next basically he never really loved harmony so i don't really think that she really had a place in this episode and it shows on the screen because i think she was one of the worst things of it and that's not mercedes mcnab's fault at all it's just the script and my personal feelings towards harmony just the character i never really connected with that much until angel really until angel season five i was made to love you is an episode title it's not me being creepy to you watching um it's the calm before the storm, the fun before the misery. I've never really been a huge fan of the whole robot aspect on Buffy. I've said that before in other videos, but yeah, not a massive fan of it, but I do like this one. Um, I do like the character of April because there's something so much fun about this really powerful woman who's obviously a robot, but who will just be really chipper, walk around being all happy while being ultra violent to people while trying to find her true love. Like, I, I liked that. And this was the episode I think that Britney Spears, I think it was, was originally meant to play the role of April. And um, that would have been interesting, but I quite like the actress that we did get. I think she did a really good job with it. Uh, Spike's interaction with April is just brilliant here. Just literally getting his ass handed to him was so much fun to see. It's always nice to see Spike beaten up. I like the character, but it is funny. While a lot of it feels throwaway, it is kind of quite important for the things that are to come. Obviously, we get Warren in this one, who uh, season six makes some waves. Uh, this is a precursor to the Buffy bot as well, which is coming very soon. So yeah, a lot of important things in this episode even though it does feel like filler but it's a fun episode it's fun it's breezy it's fairly lightweight and it's the kind of thing we need because when we get to the final moments of this episode ow the body uh, i've i mean what is there to say about the body that hasn't already been said I mean, it's one of my things why I didn't want to do more in-depth reviews is because a lot of things have already been said about the great episodes of this show uh, particularly ones like the body which is just an amazing episode of not just Buffy but of television like you don't get TV quite like this anymore and this is a total tonal shift for Buffy um, and not just the character but for the show as a whole as well having Joyce's death be so sudden so out of the blue and just so unnerving just seeing her in the corner of the screen at the end of the last episode ugh. but Joss Whedon's decision to base this on the mundane aspect of death the what he calls the almost boring part of it where you're just kind of drifting and not really processing what's happened. Man, does he nail that here. And like, performance-wise, has have people been better on this show than in this episode? I genuinely don't think so. Certainly not Sarah Michelle Gellar. Because she acts the hell out of this. Every single second that she's on screen, Sarah Michelle Gellar's given it 100%. And her performance breaks me. Like, I'm not afraid to admit there are many moments in this episode, no matter how many times I watch it, that I can't not cry. Like, I really can't. It's such powerful stuff. The script is incredible. Like, little moments in it, just a dawn breaking down in the hall at the school. And the way that's shot, you don't really kind of close in on it. You're almost, you're kind of watching that scene from a distance, like the people in the classroom are, and it's so much more powerful for it. And, of course, Anya, Anya's speech. Just, there's no way I can watch that one without getting emotional. No way. Emma Caulfield's amazing in that scene. She does so well with dialogue that is admittedly quite strange. 
Like it is very Anya-like dialogue, but she's able to make it human because of how she portrays it and how she delivers those lines. Yeah, so much about this works. Willow's obsession with trying to find a jumper. Uh, Xander just being like, fuck it, when it comes to a parking ticket. Just like every single cast member gets a lot to do. I'm glad Spike's not in the episode because he wouldn't have had a place in it at all. It needed to be one that was removed from him and all of the Glory stuff, even though Glory's mentioned. I just adore this episode. I absolutely adore it. The only thing that I didn't particularly like about it is the ending. I just, for me, I didn't really want a vampire in this episode. I didn't want the normal vampire violence. And we did get it at the end. And it just felt a little bit out of place. And I get why it's there. It's there to be like, life goes on. Like, the monsters will keep coming. Buffy just has to kind of keep fighting. I get that. But I do sort of wish we could have just had this as a completely supernatural free episode. Just one that focused on Joyce's death and the characters. But to be fair, most of the runtime we got that. It's only the few final few minutes the vampire thing came into it. And as I say, I do get why it's there. But yeah, a just incredible episode of TV in almost every single way. Forever. Um, so Forever had a bit of a difficult job ahead of it because it was following on from something incredible as The Body. And it couldn't be the same level of misery that that episode had. But at the same time, it, it couldn't exactly be a breezy throwaway episode either. Like it's a heavy episode, not quite as heavy as The Body. But then the final moments in this one, Dawn and uh, Buffy, Sarah Michelle Gellar and Michelle Trachtenberg's acting as the two of them are crying in the Summer's house is just amazing. It's such good performances from the pair of them. Um, but it is a little lighter. The Spike comes into this and he does bring some levity into the whole thing, even though he's aware of how serious things is. And I do like Spike in this one. I think it's nice to see that he's genuinely upset about Joyce because he did like her. And that's not out of the blue. Like we've seen them interact before and he always had a respect for Joyce. And his infatuation with Buffy means that he wants to help and he helps in the only way that Spike can, which is badly. And there's a really creepy aspect to this as well. I'm glad we didn't actually properly see Zombie Joyce, because it, yeah, we didn't need to see that at all. Um, the shadow was more than enough. That was more than sinister enough for me. But I think the whole bringing her back from the dead thing is something that did need to be addressed, because obviously it's going to come up very soon as well. But this is a show where that sort of thing's possible. Like We've seen it happen before, so it's understandable that Dawn would be like, I can fix this. I want to try and fix what's happened, even though it's not the right thing to do at all. And this does continue the uh, almost banality of death as well. I happen to choose a coffin, like really not exciting things to do at all. And I'm glad it showed moments like that. I thought Joyce's funeral was really well done. And this is one of the occasions where Angel just popping into the show worked. Like I didn't believe that Angel wouldn't come back to check on Buffy after something like this. So it's nice that he did. And it's nice there was no real drama between the two of them. I liked that he was just there for her and the two of them were just chatting, were just talking and he was making sure she was all right. Nice moment between those two. It's one of the more subtle crossovers that the show's had, but it's a lot better than the two times Angel appeared last season. Oh, and Joel Grey as Doc is awesome. Uh, even here, where we're not supposed to think he's that evil, he's really, really creepy. Really, really creepy actor. Uh, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. I really like the character of Doc. Intervention. We're allowed to smile again, because uh, this is a relatively fun one. Uh, it's quite serious as well, but we do get a lot of fun, particularly from Sarah Michelle Gellar with the Buffy bot. And I can only imagine how happy Sarah Michelle Gellar must have been when she read this script to find out that she gets to have some fun um, because it's been very heavy for her the last couple of episodes. Like she's put in a lot of emotional dramatic work, so it's nice to see that even though it's not actually Buffy in this one doing the fun stuff, Sarah Michelle Gellar still got to have a good time. And she's great as the Buffy bot. She's a lot of fun. She did pretty much channels what the character of April did a couple of episodes ago, but in her own sort of unique way. And yeah, it works. Um, as I say, I don't particularly like the whole robot side of things, but the Buffy bot, I can kind of forgive the whole robot thing because I do like the Buffy bot. She's fun. And it's not overlooked kind of how creepy it is that Spike made her in the first place. He made a sex doll, which is kind of gross, really, but he does redeem himself. This is one of the rare times that I actually bought Spike's infatuation with Buffy because he is getting the crap tortured out of him by glory and he's not faring very well. And Spike of old would have given them all up within a heartbeat. Like, he would have been on Glory's side, Spike, of even last season. So it does show how much he has grown, that he's willing to take the beating. And he's not going to give up Dawn's secret. He's not going to give up Dawn. Because he likes Dawn. And I genuinely actually loved that moment between Buffy and Spike at the end as well, with Buffy pretending to be the Buffy bot. It's a really, really nice moment between the two of them. And it's the kind of nice moment that I wouldn't expect us to ever get. Uh, particularly after the episode Crush and how that ended. So, uh, 
yeah, no, I enjoy intervention. Um, the stuff of the first layer, so like Giles' spiritual journey, is a great deal of fun. The hokey cokey line always makes me laugh. Um, a lot to like about intervention, and a much lighter episode that we desperately needed at this point because things are going to get grim again pretty quickly. So tough love then is an episode I think is a little on the slow side, um, but it has a lot working for it. Um, particularly Willow and Tara. Uh, Willow's growing magic has been a thing for a while now. Like we've seen her get more and more powerful, and it's nice to have it properly addressed here that it is a bit of a concern, particularly for Tara. And the argument between the two of them, it, it works, I think. It doesn't feel too much like it's come out of nowhere. And it's nice to see that these two characters can go at each other. Like, they can both stand their ground against each other when they've got a point to make. And Tara was right. Like, Willow is getting a little bit too powerful. And it shows. As soon as Tara gets the mind suck treatment, which, by the way, is horrible. It's horrible to see Tara like that. And Amber Benson does, however, play it really, really well. Um, Willow going f almost full-on vengeance is quite the sight. And it sets things up quite nicely for season six as well. She doesn't go fully evil Willow, but she goes pretty bad. Like, she's willing to risk everything to take down Glory because of what she did. And Alison Hannigan does a really good job with it. Like, I believe what Willow's doing. I believe that Willow is as powerful as she is because of Hannigan's performance. And then there's that ending, which is one of the best endings, I think, because it's such a, oh, shit, got a moment. Tara telling Glory that Dawn's the key, and she's literally right there, is a great way to end this episode and a great way to throw us into the final three of the season. Um, yeah, so a bit of a slower episode, but I still really, really like Tough Love. Spiral. Um, so Spiral's an episode that I've got mixed feelings on, really. the certain aspects of it I like. Like, I enjoy the fact it's a little bit different, but at the same time, it does feel a little bit silly on occasion, particularly the chase and the fighting on top of the RV. Like, I'm so torn with it, because on the one hand, it's really cool and it's fun to see, but on the other... Yeah, it's a bit silly. Although Brad Bellick being one of the people chasing them down, that's cool. But yeah, this is a very different feeling Buffy episode. I love the fact that they just run. Like, they just literally leg it and get out of town. And you can't blame them. Because to this point, there's not really seemed like a way to defeat Glory. Like, they've got no idea how to do it at all. So it makes sense that they'd be like, we got to get the hell out of here now and try and think of a plan later. Like, I get that. And it's quite shocking to see them all literally run. Like, you don't see them do that. And here we are, the whole Scooby gang just taking off in an RV with Spike as their driver. Um, but of course, it's not going to go smoothly. Of course, things go horribly wrong. Giles gets pretty badly injured, and they call Ben in to help, and that's when everything kind of goes to shit. Um, but even before that, I think a lot about Spiral works. I enjoy the standoff between Buffy and everybody in the Knights of Byzantium. I like that. Willow's spell of the force field around it is cool. And even though the kind of the violence doesn't really kick in until quite late in after they are in that petrol station, the tense standoff aspect of it, I think, worked. I think it worked really well. And you can tell as well that we're really gearing up to the season finale because by the end of this episode, Glory has Dawn. Like, she has her, and there's nothing that anybody can do about it, and that's a shocking moment. Like, this season's full of shocking moments. It's full of moments where it does things that I wouldn't expect it to do, and this is one of them. And then Buffy just kind of zoning out, like going full on catatonic at the end, was another like, ooh, okay, things aren't good. Uh, yeah, I really like season five, and this is an episode I think is a really, really strong one. The Weight of the World, the penultimate episode of season five, is um, probably, I think, my least favourite of this half of the season. Maybe Crush, actually. Um, and it's not that it's a bad episode, it's just, I don't know, I was expecting and hoping for kind of a bit more action at this point. Um, to have a whole episode where we're exploring Buffy's mind, like, I understand why we're doing it. Like, I understand why that's the thing that's going to happen this episode, but at the same time, I just didn't find it that investing. I think part of the problem for me is that it felt like it was just padding. Like, it was just killing time. Like, Buffy's not going to stay in this catatonic state. We know she's not. Um, I do like aspects of it. I do like that it's Willow going inside her mind to help, and we see Buffy at these different stages of her life. Like, I do like that. There are aspects of the storyline I do really, really enjoy. But as a whole, it was just like, can we put the foot down a little bit more at this point? Because that's what we've been doing the past couple of episodes. Like, things have been ramping up and ramping up, and then we get to this one, and we just kind of plateau for a little while. But then saying that, we got to see Kristen Sutherland again, and I've missed her since she died. Really missed her, but she's not dead. Joyce, I mean. Uh, but even though it is very slow, there's a lot of fun to be had, particularly from Spike being the only one to know that Glory and Ben are the same person. Like, that's cool. Nobody else remembers it apart from Spike, and his frustrations at that are a lot of fun to see. And the episode ends in a really good way as well, like Giles saying that Dawn has to die. Oof. Like, Giles doesn't say stuff like that, so that's a wow moment. That's a moment where you realise that the season finale is building up to something huge, that it's going to be a big episode. But I remember at the time not expecting it to be anywhere near as big as it was. Until we saw a trailer for it on Sky One. We'll get to that in a second. The Gift. The season five finale of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the episode where Buffy, for the second time, but kind of more properly this time, dies. 
Um, and a quick aside on this one, there's a network over here in the UK called Sky One, and one of their trailers for this episode was Buffy's Tombstone, which ruined it for everybody who saw that, and they played that advert a lot. So to this day, I'm still pissed off at Sky One for ruining one of the biggest twists that Buffy's ever done. Uh, thankfully, though, it doesn't take away from the episode too much because this is one of the best episodes of the show, without a doubt. Like, without question. Uh, it's the best season finale by a mile, and I love the season finales of this show. And it's because there's so much going on. Uh, every character gets a moment in this one. Uh, Willow and Tara. Look, Tara gets to come back. Willow gets to have her back. They get that moment together. Xander and Anya get engaged. Giles kills Ben. Like, he kills a person. Like, for a good reason. Like, I understand why he does it, and I agree with why he did it, but still... Like, we know there's a bit of Ripper in Giles, but we get to see it on display here. It's such a menacing way of doing it, just suffocating Ben. Just his hand around his face. Like, oof. Uh, Anthony Stewart Head plays that moment so well. A spike crying at Buffy's death. Uh, it just always breaks me, and that's from somebody who's not even that invested in these two as a couple. Like, yeah, Spike breaking down makes me break down. Uh, Dawn gets some great stuff to do here as well. Like, she's quite brave in a lot of the ways. Like, she's ready to accept her fate. And then, of course, there's Buffy, who makes the ultimate sacrifice by killing herself to save her sister and to save the world. Like, well, what could be better than that? How could you end a season in a better way than that? Just her body laying on the floor as everybody reacts to seeing her dead. Heartbreaking stuff, and truly well done as well. There's so much to love about The Gift, so much. Uh, because it's the 100th episode, I love the beginning of this one, the previously on, showing quick clips of all what 99 episodes up to this point. That's great. Just, oh, awesome to see that. And the action here is top-notch as well. All of the action beats in this, I think, work. A spike getting thrown off the tower by Doc is awesome. Uh, Xander with his construction machine violence, like, I loved that. Uh, Olaf's hammer coming back into play. Uh, the Buffy bot getting to reappear again in a really cool twist. Yeah, I, just, I can't think of an episode of this show that's better. But Once More With Feeling is um, obviously a fantastic episode. I won't say too much about it now because that's for the next video. But that kind of, I think, is such a memorable episode because of how good the music and things are in it. This one, just so many little moments throughout, so many character moments, so many character beats just work. Everything just feels like it comes together. It's just a brilliant script by Joss Whedon. I just love the gift. Absolutely love this episode. What a great way to end the season. Uh, so there are my briefish thoughts on the second half of season five of Buffy. And now it's over to you. Let me know what you think of all these episodes in the comments below. Let's talk about the show. Uh, let's talk about things you did like, things you didn't. Let me know. Uh, Buffy season six, we'll be getting onto that uh, next week, I believe. Next week or the week after. But either way, not long. I'll start watching those episodes through again pretty soon. So there's a few of them I don't remember quite as well. So yeah, looking forward to checking them out. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, do hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And let me know suggestions as well for what show I should do after Buffy. Um, I've got a few in mind that I might try one a little bit out of left field, but um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, do follow me on Twitter as well if you want to chat on there. I'm at Joe Julians. Also, my name on Stardust. Great app if you're not on there. Do check that out. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.